everybody out there. Ah, oh, how's it going? It's another Sunday, and are you guys ready for the Everything and Nothing podcast with your boy from Brooklyn, Chef Shannon Ambrosio? I have an amazing friend with me today, and I'm absolutely elated, and I hope everything's going good, right? So I'm going to turn on my YouTube here and make sure that we all have sound and everything else that's going on. I hope we do. I hope we're good to go. But let's do all a little bit of checking first and make sure that we are live, 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 right? That we are Calvin, say hello. Live. Come hello. close. Hello to the world. Oh, that's what's up right there. You sound great. <laughs> all right, so let me turn the volume down on this. All right, so we know we're good to go. We know everything is working. We're copacetic. It's Sunday, and are you guys ready for another Everything and Nothing podcast? I have, to the left of me and maybe to the right of you, I'm not sure where it is, I have the CMOS boss. I have the man who put the don't you worry into be happy, folks. <laughs> My buddy from culinary school, chef as well, Mr. Calvin Christie, reggae artist. Thank you. Thank you. What's going on? How are you, Calvin? Life is beautiful, baby. Life <laughs> is beautiful. I love when life is beautiful. You know what's funny is that we were, first of all, we've been hanging out all day. So the idea of the conversation has gone into many, many places. And hello to everybody out there that's already hopped in and, and uh, joining in on the live. So just to give you a little backstory, Calvin and I went to culinary school together. And uh, Calvin is from Jamaica. And, and he... He and I were in culinary school together. And it was funny because we're learning everything about the culinary arts. And I mean everything from, you know, butchering to making bread to, you know, uh, waiting tables, building restaurants, so on and so forth. And here it is, me thinking this whole time because we're cooking everything from, you know, soup to nuts that Mr. Calvin Christie was, you know, eating everything and enjoying the food just as much as I am, right? I was. And, and he was, but just on a different level, right? So I'll let Calvin explain to you, right, his, his lifestyle. And this is the reason why him and I got been getting together lately and talking about a lot of things is because um, the idea of his lifestyle, healthy life, living through food and music. So that's how we come together. We come together for the fact that we bring love and positivity through food together because we went to culinary school together. But he lives a whole different lifestyle through his reggae music that he performs. And he, the, both of those things live together. And that's the reason why we're talking today. And I absolutely think it's fantastic. So Calvin, please tell everybody about this great uh, crusade that you're on and this, these things that you're introducing uh, to people that you've been eating for a really long time for that type of healthy lifestyle. Well, again, thank you for having me here, Shannon. I'm actually humbled to be here because, you know, like, we always want to think of ourselves as, you know, whatever we do, we are the only one doing it, or we are special in that regard. For me, the only, the only thing that is special about me is me being me. And me being me meaning that I already, not already, but I discovered that certain things, I grew up hearing that you you are what you eat. I, when I heard it first, it's like, mm, you are what you eat? So if I eat a cow, am I a cow or something? <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me. There are people that eat things that do tend to look like the things they eat. But I'm not, you know, I'm not passing judgment on anybody out there. But I was just thinking, but then that statement ring truth to me when I turned, when I became an adult, like, my lifestyle came up, change came about of being Rasta. Mm. Um, ah. and, 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 and I know it's uh, being Rasta is very different than what most people think, right? Yes. So explain that. Well, being Rasta, then I, I actually started um, accepting the, the Rastafarian lifestyle and the faith. Not really faith, but the lifestyle back right. in, um, like in the late 80s. So, also, I was moving with 
two Rasta people, my sister and she's not alive anymore, Grace Nelson and her husband, which are both Rasta. So kind of influenced me in that sense. And me living, and we know about how Rasta lives in Jamaica. Once you become a Rasta in terms of wearing a locks, living as that lifestyle, you forsake all meat. You don't eat meat. So right. it's more upon a natural ital diet. Carl Rasta say ital is vital. And ital, all ital mean is that you don't eat uh, meat. You eat mostly plant-based vegetable. Some Rasta man even cook without salt because naturally all of the plants have their different different minerals that bring out that salt when you combine them together. Right. So that kind of a way how the Rasta man think to. So me being seeing myself going that way then now you have to live a certain way and think of a certain way think a certain way but the more the older i get i realize that hey it's not so much just a rasta lifestyle or you being rasta so you don't eat meat or you don't eat this or you don't eat that not to say that it just mean that you look to be to keep yourself healthy and whatever is going to give you that health and that vitality you're going to like want to gravitate to right that. so like you know what you put in your body is what's going to go out of your body too right so if you're exactly. eating you know a much healthier diet and you have a much more plant-based uh you know uh, diet for vitamins and nutrients and all those things it helps the entire body not just the physical sense but the the mental, I, the mental state of your mind as well right Right. Because your body takes a long time to digest or break down large amounts of proteins and animal uh, products of, of, you know, and dairy and all those things. The body takes a long time to break them down. Yes. And there's a lot of things that aren't being used that are unnecessary that are hurting us. Yes. Correct? Yes. All right. Yes. So the idea of the Rasta lifestyle is making sure that we're keeping the body as healthy as the mind especially the things that we put in it so abst abstinence actually is helpful in that sense okay abstinence as in you were talking earlier stay, about stay away from certain food like for instance since um since 2016 2016 is when i stopped eating rice butter oh wow flour Wow. Sugar. <laughs> no Bre birthday cake for you. <laughs> Bre no, bread. You know, <laughs> pasta. We love bread. Because um, what happened is that I was reading about alkaline and acid. And while I have, have a little, very small knowledge about alkaline back in the days when I was going to Jamaica, mm. when I came here and started read certain things, and then when I discovered Dr. Sebi. Uh, Dr. Sebi. Mm. Okay. which is the person that sent off all of the light bulbs in my head, the way how he explained alkaline and acid together. Right. So and basically your eating habits are changing based on not just the idea of feeling better, but the scientific reason as to why. Yes, because as we discover, some of us discover that, not even discover, you always want to have energy. Energy helps you to do things. Right. Low energy, you can't do anything. That's the biggest gripe out there. We all suffer from these things. I know, Calvin, right? Because it's the idea of the coffee crash, right? We talked yeah, about that talked idea, about right? That early. And for me and a lot of people out there, right? We always think about the coffee. Look, Red Bull now. I mean, f energy drinks. I mean, and it's all. What's the feeling on that? Because I know you use an alternative as to something like that, and I think we forgot it, but you can mention it. So there is something that you do drink that's almost like a coffee that I would be, you know, uh, uh, you know, using instead of coffee, right? So the idea is I would substitute this thing that you <coughs> drink instead of the coffee. So what is it? Well, it's kind of nice talking about these things on air because... <laughs> People come to me and say, by the way, for you, I'm not really advertising like I'm old, but I'm just saying, for how I feel and look, I'm 58 years of age. I was born in March 1963. And that's amazing. And I'm 58 years of age. I do solar work for a living right now. Apart from physical. The, physical. Like the, your boy. Physical labor. Yeah, apart from the other ventures that I'm in, involved in. Right. But I'm the oldest person on the roof every day, and I've been doing this job for four years. After cooking in a high, uh, high, high end restaurant, high end restaurant. Tell everybody four. the restaurant you cooked in. The Charter House. The Charter House. We hawking. I, I, I kicked that place for four years. Listen to me. 
the chart house. I mean, not a, listen, the guy is very skilled at what he does as being a chef, but he also, you know, the other part of what he's doing for the healthy side of his lifestyle now. But the man also does physical labor like your boy right here. So the idea that what he's talking about is coming up with these alternatives so that your body can heal take naturally. The, yeah, and take that grind. Yeah. Because trust me, every day on that roof, all my coworkers, them, them like, yo, they call me Shaba on the job. They're like, Shaba, you don't stop. Shaba. And the, and the truth is, I don't stop because it's not like I'm trying to prove anything. I'm not tired. Right. I'm energized. So we keep working. Right. That's about and it. this is all based on, right? So the idea is this, right? He had, because Calvin and I spoke in culinary school many times, and he's always had this idea of the healthy living and the healthy lifestyle, right? It was funny because we'd have service meal, right? <laughs> He'd always be looking, you don't want, because all the young bucks that were in school, they didn't eat their vegetables no, and they stuff. Don't want no vegetables. And they don't want to, so we would give him all the vegetables and stuff like that, which is great. But the understanding and watching and the reasons why is what always intrigued me. So when uh, Calvin started talking to me about these things that he uses as alternatives for like energy and proteins and all these things and he keeps going back to this one thing and the reason why i call him the sea moss boss is because we have some sea moss here right yep so right here and i'm gonna pull up this idea for, well, for like jar. two seconds and i want everybody to out there to see um how we can you know why sea moss and what it means um for this whole idea right so here's some of the really the really good reasons as to why you should be eating or consuming sea moss right and you don't have to eat like spoonfuls of it right tell everybody well this is a sea moss gel <clears throat> the sea moss actually is like strings when it come it look like whisk like um, just brushes like what you that see but it's from the sea the ocean so they harvest it from the ocean and they dried it when you it's what sea moss is actually what they call um a seaweed but it's um what's the next word we use for each other um, uh no uh, algae algae yeah it's a, yeah. a sea moss so, uh, is an algae. algae right so it's described as a form of seaweed as the other was a seaweed that people may be familiar with however when you take this thing some people take it they dried it and wash it and dried it and then it just looked like like a like maybe a mesh something but you soak it in water mm. like you soak it in water like for two days i normally soak mine for anywhere between two and three days i put it in the pot and immerse it make water all right over it leave it the first day i throw out that water and the second day now i put it on next water again and leave it and then the do third you, day, do you drain the water from the first time or no you just add because just it the absorbs first time, it. just the first one okay so because you, i kind of just wash it off like right like a rinsing process yes yeah. i got you so the second one i left it and then the third day i take it out of that water and it has, has absorbed all this water now sea moss once you put it in water it's like it grow it just get really big and yeah it's fat, like, like like fingers like one of the, you know like remember when you're a kid you had those things and you put it in water and it grew made like a dinosaur or something yeah that's yeah yo the base of those things believe it or not most people don't know that the base of those things are made with algae algae of some kind that's how it grows and gets so big right and most people don't think of certain things in in that fashion right what this can possibly do to things besides the consumption of it right so just just so people know out there what are the benefits like your recovery you're talking about inflammation in the body what else i want you to know the 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 they say that we have 108 minerals it is 104 108 minerals that humans have a bit are, are available to them and that they use Sea moss alone has 94 of those minerals. Now, here you know better than me, but here I was doing a little research on that. I, listen to me, you know that song by Jay-Z, I got 99 problems, but uh, ain't one. Sea moss, technically, 99 of the minerals that we all need in our bodies on a daily basis. Sea moss has it. 99 of I them. I saw it, see? 
correction. I said 94, 99. 99. So Crazy. even more than what I'm saying. Yes. That's how good this thing is. That's why Dr. Sabre recommend that we drink this every single day. The, the thing about it, CMOS is so versatile. You can use it in your tea. First thing, some people, when they soaked it, they just blend it like that. Yes. Me, CMOS has what CMOS has what you call trace minerals in it. And yes. we, we know that. It. Trace minerals, um, it it still stand up whether with heat or our heavy coal. It still don't lose it, its pot its potency. So because of that, I boil my sea moss on a very low fire after I soaked it, and it yield me a pound of this, a pound of the the thing itself yield me about like five or six of these jars. They want them a little bit bigger. And eat, this jar can serve you at least for three weeks if you use from it every single day. Right. So the idea of the properties behind what CMOS um, takes on, it's almost like a chameleon, right? Because you could use this as a thickener for gravies and yeah, sauces, yes, which could, is great because yes, it's all natural. Yes, you could use this in your soup. In your soups. You could use it as um, stews. In your stews. And you could make, you could use it, make, it make wicked smoothies. <laughs> Man! <laughs> I'm, I've been selling this other job for the last two years. My four man and other guys buy it. <laughs> I swear to you. So uh, we're going to try, we're going to try and he's working on getting some of this stuff uh, bottled and packaged and all that. And I'll let you know once we get some, some more uh, insight on it. Right, Cal? So now. I'm really, I'm always thinking about this idea of what the replacements are for certain things, right? So you can use those as thickener agents and make all kinds of additives with the CMOS, right? So you're getting the benefits. The idea is the benefit that you're getting added to it instead of the flour, instead of the white bleach stuff that's really horrible for you and so on and so forth. So the alternatives, right? So we also brought the mayonnaise, right? Tell everybody what this is because <laughs> I love that one. Actually, the, this... This is a vegan mayonnaise that I have been making for two years now. And I've been selling it to a few of my close friends them. But this is all pure. This is um made from um the base of it is what from a thing that they call aquafaba. Mm. That's spelled A Q U A F A B A. Listen to me. Not only are you getting food <laughs> lessons in science, this is a spelling bee too. You're gonna be quizzed later. You gotta be able to spell that, because I can't. And not only that, what this is just aquafaba is just the water from cooked beans. In this case, we're using chickpea. So we cook the chickpea, throw the water off, we use the chickpea to do other things Hummus. and then, and then the water is what I use, the water and some other spices, which I won't tell you right now. <laughs> we use. Just, what did we say before? It's not a secret if you tell anybody. Yeah, so you, you you, the only way it's going to work is when you get one. But but as we said, to me, no, trust me, trust me. We are about making money when we come up with certain things that we think can make money for us. But the first yeah, order the of business, the thing is for helping people. Yes. So, you know, you will know the ingredients once we have the thing ready to package and come out. You will see some. And listen stuff. to me, folks. You know who's getting the go today? If you can't spell, <laughs> what do you call it? <laughs> Aquafaba. Aquafaba. Listen to me. Uh, in the comments below, somebody swell, spell Aquafaba. And if you can't spell it, you're getting the go. And that's the way it goes. Now, listen to me, folks. I'm going to run through the gamut. I'm telling you, I'm absolutely, you know, elated that Calvin is here talking with us and explaining everything. But you know how it goes. This is brought to you by the ENN Studios. And make sure you're subscribed to my channel because on the Everything and Nothing podcast, Calvin, tell them anything goes. Anything goes. Anything. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and get your bell rung. I'm not doing the bell thing because it never rings automatically, right? <laughs> and you know how I feel about that. <laughs> So uh, we'll just off that one today. And listen to me, you can find me on any of my social media and I'm gonna put a link to your social media down there too, right? Definitely. And this way, we'll put a link to your social media down there. They can contact Mr. Calvin Christie and you guys can, once he gets this all done, you can order these things because they will be for sale eventually. Actually, the CMOS, I have, I have, um I have put that up on Instagram already, and I've been selling, as I said, I've been selling the CMOS for the last year and a half. The drink, now I'm selling the gel itself, because the gel, it to me, 
My thing is that I want you to learn how to do most of these things for yourself. While it bring money from my in my pocket, me selling it to right. you, when you know how to do it, you will put money in my pocket by asking me for consultation. Yeah. Simple. <laughs> so there's there's a twofold there. But the idea of the benefits behind us, right? Because I've known Calvin for quite a while now, and he's been living this healthy lifestyle, and I get it, right? So it's just important that the understanding of what it is and what it does is really the message that he's, as long as I know him, he's been talking about, right? So the benefits of everything, the idea of, uh, you know, longevity, right? It, it, it takes care of recovery from muscle aches. It, it reduces swelling in the body. Yeah. And it also, see, is something when you drink it, you don't get easily hungry. Right. right, something that's it, it go through your body, so it's kind of sit inside of you. So you drink water, and you're good, unless you just like to eat. If yeah, that, if you just like to eat, then that's okay. That's different. <laughs> you, you may be drinking a lot of the sea moss right there. <laughs> but but if you really want to cut back and make sure that when you take something in, it's something that will help you more. You know. Yeah. That this is a good alternative. I like that idea, and what's funny is that it, it's not just his his idea of be uh, living a healthy lifestyle through food. It happens in every part of the the basis of his eating habits, right? So even when he's eating, there are certain things that he'll add. Like when we eat, right, certain things, right, uh, ketchup on burgers, barbecue sauce on ribs and all that stuff. He also def definitely likes flavor because he is a chef. Believe me, an amazing chef. So he does this Jamaican hot, hot. sauce that he's bottling now that we're going to have available. And I'll put it down in the links once it's all ready. But it's absolutely amazing. Again, an another thing that's like has healing properties. It has taste. It has all those things that are necessary um, that lead to a healthy eating lifestyle, right? So tell everybody about the peppers. Well, the pepper sauce, actually, that's one of the first things I've been. I've been making the sauce since, um, like, 2013. Bring, I, it bring it over here so it's in camera. I yeah, used to yeah. just have this for my house. But, um, that's the pepper sauce. A couple of people, like, um, realized that I have it. Friends, really. And they started liking it. Tell them friends about it. So then I this the guy who I get this pepper from, I used to work with him. These peppers were planted in... Amish country in Pennsylvania, and this is Scotch bonnet pepper. Uh huh. Is it only just one type of pepper? How many different types of peppers? Actually, this pepper is only one type of pepper I'm using. Okay. I'm just using red Scotch bonnet or yellow Scotch bonnet pepper. Okay. You also have habaneros, which is just as hot, but Scotch bonnet comes with a lot of flavors. Yes. Yes. Yes, and a lot of heat. Scoville each unit. It it is it is hot. I can tell you that. I taste it. It is hot. But the good thing is that it has a taste, right? So a lot of hot sauces, and the reason why I'm not a big fan of hot sauces, because some of them are just so overbearing that... No flavor. There's though. no flavor. Yeah, and yeah, after yeah. a while, it, it just, it, the heat, and it's unbearable. So this has a lot of flavor in it. And I'm sure he has the hot one now, and, and eventually I'm sure there'll be one that's maybe yeah. medium, and then one maybe that's mild. Yeah, I'm planning to make something like mild and sweet. But you see, flavor... Um, when I is everything. To, no, when we're I chefs. To to school, <laughs> flavor is everything. <laughs> it just is. Flavor is everything, it, yo. And it doesn't matter, right? So tell him, right? It doesn't matter. Even if it's, look, vegan, it, vegetarian, he's it pescatarian. Doesn't matter. It doesn't I'm matter. I'm a pescatarian because I still eat fish. But I'm telling you, anything you are making for your consumption or for the consumption of others, yeah. remember flavor is everything yeah flavor is everything so 100 percent. so this sauce i'm making for you i bring heat and that's because i realized that there's no really really hot pepper around that's a flavor but this pepper trust me and it's heat delicious and flavor it's delicious and I, I the idea right so here's the reason why so calvin and calvin is not just on this idea of a healthy lifestyle and the whole um, eating aspect he's encompassing the whole rasta lifestyle so not only is he doing the um food and introducing that lifestyle for him but now introducing it to everybody else he's he also sings about it so his music is how he's bringing his message of healthy living and that lifestyle out to the people which i absolutely think is fantastic right
Tell everybody about it, Calvin. Look, I'm not going to sit here and bore you with how far I've come from and all of that stuff. What I will say to you, I've been around with the music, you know, and right now, I have two new singles that's about to drop, actually, but there's one that's directly coming from me and a partner that we're working on, it's called All Day Long. So we shoot the video a couple of weeks ago and it's being edited right now and the single is ready. Everything is ready to go right now. We're just waiting on a few formalities and then that new single is going to be dropping. So it's going to be available on all of the the social and uh, musical platforms and that are around. Yeah. And, and I'll put a link. I'll put a link. Once the song comes out, I'll put a link on this video so you guys can hear the full version. And I just want anybody who will listen, as again, you know, there is, I don't feel that I'm special. I don't feel that I'm privileged. What I feel that I am, I feel that I'm blessed and I'm energized to be in a position to whatever I bring in me, I can offer listening? it out there. Are you listening you out understand? there? You understand? So that, what me come with as a man, as a person, I come with an experience. Yes. Because as I said, I've been around for a little bit. So the things that I'm coming with, my hope that if it change one person's life, then I think I'm, I'm definitely making an headway because that person could, it could change that person's life and because of that, it changed that one and so on and so yeah. forth. The because, ripple effect. I talk yeah, about that. Yeah. Because, you you hurt, help one person, it creates the ripple effect. It goes out there. Eventually, that person's helping somebody and then it catches on and before you know it. I mean, that's truly, right? When we always talk about the spirit and the way you feel about things, it's, it's an understanding that, you know, we have to be, the, the whole generality of just being good <laughs> all around, it makes more sense than not. Yes. Right? So healthy lifestyle is one. Sp spreading the idea of music is another by talking about issues in certain ways through music, through right? Music. Nourishing your soul through music. And uh, as well as others. Yes. And that's on the basis that I want people to see me. I'm an artist. I'm a businessman. I'm an, a humanitarian. Yes. You know. Very much like our buddy back here, Mr. Ali was. Yeah. So the idea of spreading this healthy lifestyle is not just through food; it's through everyday life. It's the idea of who you are and, and who Water, you are yeah. and who you are to other people. Yes, that's that's the truest of all. Yes. I mean, I'd like for them. We're gonna play a little bit of his uh, song, just a little bit. We'll play a little bit of it, and on you'll see on the picture that I move over. Um, I'm hoping this is all good. Um, I move it over. It has, you know, it has some information there. So if you want, you know, take a screenshot or something. Well, watch this again, right? <laughs> so listen to me. Watch this again if you want a second time so you can catch it all again. But I'm going to move this over and uh, we'll, we'll play a little bit. All right? Is it playing? I don't hear it much. And I'm not sure if it's playing. But if it is, everybody out there, please just, uh, I don't see it playing so i don't know let's see give me one second and let me make sure this is all working here uh and then we'll 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 play it so what do you think and i hope everybody could hear it out there. Yeah, I... snake preview yeah Sneak preview. How about now? Can you guys hear it now? My life is protected all day long. Now I won't good. be subjected because I'm so strong. I know you're judging me. But you're so wrong, yeah I listen to you now Gonna sing my song Sing it again All day long All the day long, yeah All day long Me I go sing my song, yeah 
yeah. All right. So that's that's a little bit of his new one of the new singles that's coming out. And I'm just as excited as he is because he sent me the song last week and I've listened to it probably about a hundred times already. And it really does, right? So the music that you're performing really does talk about your healthy lifestyle and how you live that healthy lifestyle. Well, there you have it. <laughs> what else am I supposed to say? I don't know. <laughs> but, but, but the idea is that the transcendence between the way you think about how you live your life through all these things that promote this, the Rasta and the way you feel about that lifestyle, it's, it really comes across in your music and the food that you're producing. Well, you see, that's the whole idea. It's kind of like you're creating synergy, you know? Right. You're creating synergy. Right. So the food gives you the energy to write songs and to make them. So you so that should be talked about that type of food. What is the food that make you? You know, you see mm -hmm. Bolt is the fastest man in the world. Um, a couple of years ago, right? And they're like, what do you eat before you go to a race? <laughs> do you eat um, yellow yam? Do you eat yeah. dumpling? Mm -hmm. But what people must understand is not so much of what you eat. Sometimes it's all that mindset. For me, it's more my mindset. So my mindset tell me, yo, Calvin, if you want to sustain your energy, you have to put electric food in your body. Right. So what are electric food? It's only one place you can get electric food from, your garden. Right. Or the garden of others. Right. You understand? And that's um, plants. And, and, and the, that lifestyle, right, basically talks about getting what you need, your nourishment from the earth, right? Yes. So basically what grows from the ground at some point even if in the ground we say ground we mean earth but also from the sea yeah, right the where sea, sea moss comes yeah, from yes the idea of these things and having that healthy lifestyle is what this is all about so it comes across in his music and i think that idea of i can't help it sit a little closer so everybody can see your handsome face like um, <laughs> so the idea of that is really reigning true through through its, its linear for your lifetime yes because it comes through in the music it comes through in the food it comes through in the way you live your life that healthy lifestyle that rasta life i i'm telling you this it it's very enamoring right again again you may there sitting there thinking look at these guys talking about health and living and all of that stuff again remember everything is relative so if you love whatever you love eating all we are saying make sure they help you to maintain mm. your energy because you know before you know it some people is like well read this and you that and like yeah whatever you are doing and if it gives you i read this book called the tower of health sex and longevity written by a man named daniel p reed a couple of years ago and he said while um vegetables and certain things are really good for you he said this is all you could try if you eat a steak dinner today and see how you feel make sure you you put down how you feel after you eat that dinner yep. you're energized or what no and then tomorrow go and eat a vegetable dinner and then weigh the two if the if the vegetable give you more energy and don't yes. make you feel like you want to sleep after then that's it if the if the meat dinner the steak dinner Did make you, you feel like you want you have that energy so be it. because at the end of the day we have to make those choices for ourselves yes. you know but at the same time i'm saying for the benefit of me who have done this i'm just saying that <laughs> So we were talking before because we're eating, right? And I, I agree. So I agree with everything that Calvin says. And the worst part about it, or the worst and the best part, and I think for a lot of people and myself too, is that we already all know this, right? So the things that we're putting into our body and how that makes us feel afterwards is, you know, a two different things from the mind satisfaction of what you get, right? Because I know all those things are great for me and I'm sure this will go into my diet at some point but I'm still going to eat a two-inch thick T-bone or ribeye 
because I like it. Not necessarily because I know it's the greatest thing for me, yes. but I actually enjoy it. So right. like we talked, right? There is um, everything in moderation. moderation. I was just about to say that. Right? That word. That word. It's a good word. Yeah. You just have to just just look at it and see what is going on with it. Right. Because if we less is more sometimes. Right. Yes. Right. Because, you know, we talked earlier and he, you know, I was asking, you know, what this was, this, this will fill you up. Right. So you drink the CMOS. It could be an, a meal alternative. Right. Because you do get fill, uh, filled up from that. And yeah. then the idea he, you know, he was telling me, he's like, I'm going to have one meal today and I may have some CMOS and some other stuff. Right. And I'm going to get all the nutrients and everything I need to give me enough energy. And that's what I want. So I don't necessarily have to fill up on all those proteins all the time that everybody's talking about. And I'm going to throw this in there. I'm, I'm just being very mischievous right now, yep. what I'm saying. But remember, protein, I don't even know if there's a word named protein, even people say that. I know minerals. Right. Minerals is key because every plant that you, you, you take part of, you get minerals from it. I'm just being... Um, not talking about protein. And so stuff like he's basically, you know, right? So Calvin's trying to say, like, you can get just as much protein from minerals and plants and other ways to get it. And you do. Uh, the consumption value would have to be there, right? Because you can eat a steak and get a lot, but you'd have to eat a lot of plants to get it. And, but we have to also believe. We have to also. He's a singer, and I'm having a problem keeping him in front of the mic. Yeah, yeah, because I'm thinking I'm still on stage, you know? I'm sorry. But what I'm saying also, like, I really want to tell them a little bit, um, Shannon, about the maca powder. Oh, Be yes. Because the maca powder. So ho hold on. We touched on that before. So the idea of the maca powder, right? Because I talk about coffee all the time because I'm a coffee head, right? And that's just the way it goes. But there are alternatives, right? Because we all wake up, and me included, right? I wake up in the morning, I need my espresso, right? What's your go-to? maca powder or ashwagandha all right like i say like when you make hot chocolate yes maca powder and ashwagandha you can use those two powders you same can, idea you could have make them by singularly and you can mix them together, together. and you have like a nice chocolate because what right. i do i make my own milk you see i get i just again i'm giving you information that you can use yeah i just get the raw walnuts from the store, mm. I just soaked it overnight, wash it up, and the next day, I just blend it in cold water, blend it in a blender, strain it through a fine, a fine strainer, but then, excuse me, you have to have a piece of cheesecloth or fine cloth oh, to yeah. get out all of that extra fiber. Right. And then you have that clean milk. So I use the milk, a tablespoon of maca powder and ashwagandha powder, a little tip of agave, and I just whisk it in the blender for like two seconds or three seconds. And I put it on the fire for just um, chill a little bit. Mm. And then I add a little vanilla, a little nutmeg. And it's delicious. And it's delicious. But it, that that's a real, But you know what's funny? It, sa it sounds delicious. Like it sounds tasty. It is tasty. And the maca powder, right? So the maca powder, so everybody knows out there. Tell them, it's almost like an... It, it's got its own flavor, but it smells, it even smells sweet. It smells very nice. Actually, the maca powder is a native to Peru, and it's a root that they dug up and they dry it, and then they ground it they up. And, yeah, they grind it up and make it into a powder. And the maca powder, the Incas used to use it a lot back in the time. Of For the energy. Yeah, For straight energy. Straight energy. Because that maca powder, they used to drink that. No, come on. That was their coffee. Shannon, if you want energy constantly to your day, mm. just take a cup of maca powder. And these things are best taken on empty stomach first thing in the morning. Nice. They absorb in the body much quicker. Uh, okay. Yeah. I like that idea. Yeah. And I like the idea of having a substitute, right? Because... We all know. I mean, too much caffeine is just too much caffeine, um, even though we, well, they're addictive. So it does, it is a physical addiction uh, a while. And the good thing about having stuff that's organic and root-based, even though coffee's a bean, the caffeine idea when it happens is a different process, right? Yeah, the, the, the coffee, if you just drink the coffee, again, a lot of these things people can find out these information online because you have smartphone and stuff like that but the coffee remember it's a bean 
So if the coffee was just a brew and you have it just like that, you maybe just put a little agave just for sweetness. Just for sweetness. Then you wouldn't suffer from that crash. But when you put milk and these other um, um, sugars in it. Right. Milk, uh, the creams, the dairy, all yeah, those things. You, 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 you just contaminate a good, good um, right. energy drink. Energy drink, right? Because you know uh, what's funny is that when I used it's to all commercial, all of that stuff is all about yes. commercialism. And yeah. when I used to train, when I trained a lot, I never, I didn't use uh, over the counter powders like energy powders yeah. because they make my heart palpitate too bad. But one shot of espresso or black espresso right down before I would train give me enough energy to get through the workout uh, and you know it's funny and i'm going to use this as a bad example and a handful not a handful but a small handful of like jelly beans because of the saccharin i mean uh, uh, because of the glucose right the high sugar level in there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so between that and the caffeine but I, the best thing about it is that i knew when i was done training i was done like i wasn't jittery i didn't i didn't feel anxious because the natural caffeine without anything in it and then and the highest level of sugar you can get once they mix together and they're used up from training it's out of your system yeah it's how you it's, work it out yeah because yeah. it's no longer there and i i love that idea i like the idea of the i what really in, you know got me the most out of this whole thing and wanting to talk with you here with everybody out there is this fact of this lifestyle that you have become so accustomed to that puts you in a different place like uh, mentally and physically with the idea of replacing certain things in your diet you being a chef and us going to culinary school and then learning about all these things on your own and then incorporating it with your skill and your lifestyle that to me is the best part about this whole thing well you see also to that <clears throat> Fasting, when I say, I had used the statements earlier on that less is more. Sometimes less is really more because like me, for instance, and I'm saying this here, I'm not saying that you are me, I should try to be me, because you are not. But yeah. I'm just saying, if I can do it, I look a country boy from Jamaica and other bush yeah. in Jamaica can do it. So can you in this first world country that you live with everything available to you. Right. Availability, right? <laughs> we have we can get stuff shipped on. Maybe house. you have too much available to you in this country. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that like me, for instance, this morning, I get up and I make that maca chocolate that I telling you about. Right. I had that and the, I have only eaten since we had dinner yeah. early on, right? Yeah. And I'm good for the rest of the day. Yeah. I'm good. All I need is water, Dread. And I'm saying I could never ever reach this spot if I wasn't training. Right. I practice. Right. I do seven day fast. I do ten day fast. And these fasts I was using grape. I eat I do like a ten day grape fast. I do five day first, take the weekend off. And then I do another five days, and then I stop. But all this time, I was eating grapes and water, and, and seeded grapes and water. And the idea is this, right? Because, and I know a lot of people think, right? Uh, you know, you have to consume the whole idea that they're given this this false uh, advertisement. You need three meals a day. You'll get your proper nutrients and all that stuff. It's a lie. It's nonsense, right? So the idea is. <laughs> If you think about it, if you take the practicality of everything and you really think about it, if you have, if you get up at nine o'clock in the morning and you have a big breakfast and you can have anything you want, and I don't care what it is, do you really need to eat again another four hours? No, you don't. You really don't. Your body, it takes 24 hours for your body to consume anything you put in it. It does. That's, that's a scientific fact. 24 hours. So the idea that everybody has this idea of hunger pains, it's, it's the, we trained our brains to think a certain manner, and that's the why that happens. So fasting has been happening since, you know, the dawn, of time. the dawn of time. So they talk about it in a lot of religions and so on and so forth. But the idea that the body needs what it needs, and then it uses it, and then it doesn't need it again until it needs it. So the eating part of the constant consuming of food is really what puts our bodies into these whirlwinds constantly. And not, not, not only the constant um, eating of food, if we're eating good food, then probably wouldn't suffer so bad. Well, that's yeah. the difference. Yeah. What I'm saying is the consumption yeah. side of it isn't the most horrible side. What we eat and how much of it we eat is the reason why. So just, just tell yourself, let's practice a little bit. Mm. Practice a little bit because trust me, 
there is nothing you start today and you accomplish it tomorrow. It's there. No. Right. No. Right. But you and are, we all know that, right? right. It takes a while to so, do things. Period. So just put a little mindset because what you could do, you could what you could do in the, like say you could try yourself. You wake up in the morning, you have some tea, whatever that tea is, and then you see how you feel. Suppose what? Suppose you get up at six. See how you feel when nine o'clock come. Yeah. And if you're not really that hungry, Don't then eat. see how you feel till when when ten or eleven o'clock come. Correct. And because you really should. Eat when you're, you're hungry, hungry yes. and not nerves. Not not out of uh, you know Boredom schedule or yeah. all of that stuff. You yes. should only eat when you're hungry, and that's what I've been practicing for the last couple of years. Right, and I think it's working because I look good. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> Yeah, listen to me. I don't know what to I say. I feel good. He looks good. He feels good. That's Calvin Christie, Mr. Reggae. So I don't know. He is the Seymour's boss, and he's been telling me this as long as I know him, right? Because we both went to culinary school. We were a little more seasoned than most students, right? Yes, so, of course, are. we gravitated towards each other because, you know, I guess we, our, exper our life experiences kind of brought us, they bring us together by the gap. Yeah. Um, so it made it a lot easier for us to talk to each other. And the understanding was that in life, because we both changed our career paths later on in lives, um, I think my understanding of why he thought about something a certain way, it really made a lot more sense to me than I think most of the younger students that were there. And I really enjoyed that. I love the conversations we had. I love the explanations. I love the reasoning and the ideas as to understanding that change sometimes is just as important as not changing. Right, Because you can stay the way you are and hope that something happens, or you can change the way you are and make something happen. Yes, sir. That yes, right sir. there is That's the way right it works. There. Yes, sir. So <laughs> I know the show is coming to, to an end. We got a couple minutes here. I'm going to put down, and like, like I said, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, make that, a, that an important thing to do right there. And listen to me. If you really like it, <laughs> throw a thumbs up, you know. Thumbs up. We like you just as much as you like us. You heard, you heard. So, and then share this out with somebody you like, right? Because they're going to want to know about this information from the Seymour's boss right there. And any questions and comments, you know, you can leave them below, right down in the description, right? And I'll have links to everything, you know, eventually I'll have links to Calvin's uh, social media so you guys can reach out to him. And, um, you know, and we all know that nobody got the goat today, which is good. Right? <laughs> Except if you don't go down there and subscribe, you're getting the goat. All right. And if you want to listen to this podcast, Calvin, they can listen to this podcast because I covered Calvin with it. They can listen to this podcast on any one of these podcasting platforms. Like I said, this is great to get in the car, turn this on. We're going to, uh, Calvin's going to teach you about CMOS. Uh, he's going to, uh, you're going to hear a little bit of his reggae song that's coming out soon. And you know, you want to do that right there. So nobody's getting it today and make sure. Oh my God. Who the hell cares? You care. Like we care. Oh my and God. Who very, the hell very cares? Important. And don't you worry. My God. Are you still talking? I am, but our time is up and I can't say thank you enough, Calvin, for coming down. Thank you, brother. It's for having always. Me. Thank you for having Much me. respect, brethren, right? And that's how we do it. This is your boy from Brooklyn. This has been the Everything and Nothing podcast, folks. And you know what? We out. We out.